What I want to talk to you about is why we need no-take zones in the sea. And in New Zealand, what we mean when we talk about no-take zones really is marine reserves. They're set up to protect biodiversity. And if we want to compare what we have in the sea with what similar protection we have on land, something like 30% of our land area is protected for its natural values in uh, parks like national parks and regional parks, that sort of thing. In comparison, in the sea, we only have about 4% of our seas are similarly, similarly protected, and as far as coastal waters are concerned, is less than 1%. It's not a very good balance and uh, we really need to do something about that. One of the things that has happened in New Zealand since humans got here, of course, is a large amount of fishing and um, everywhere people go around the world, one of the first things they do is, is start taking fish out of the sea. And the taking fish out of the sea mostly means taking out big predators for a start and these have big impacts on the rest of the ecology. If we look at how snapper, for example, has been decreased in New Zealand over the years, it's quite dramatic. Back in 1850 or so, they reckon there was something like 270,000 tonnes of snapper in northeastern New Zealand. And by the time we are now, it's much, much much, much less than that. And you can see through the uh, early 1900s, there's a, a, a very dramatic crash in numbers of snapper. This was when large-scale industrial fishing got off the ground, things like trawling. And what the government policy on fishing is, is that they try to maintain the population of snapper and other commercial species at only about 20% of its original biomass. This is to achieve what we call the maximum sustainable yield, which is the maximum amount of weight you can get out of the fishery each year. And one of the things that happens if you take out 80% of the snapper, as has been done, um, this starts to have an impact on the rest of the ecology. One of the things that snapper like to eat is kinna or sea urchins. And if you take out 80% of the snapper population, obviously that's going to have an effect on their food species, in this case, kinna. And kinna have multiplied in northeastern New Zealand dramatically over the last 50 years or so. And what do kinna eat? They eat kelp. And we have big areas in our shallow coastal seas where the kelp forest has been chewed down by the kinna here. And we end up with um, what we term kinna barrens. Well, these are areas where kinna have grown in abundance so much they've actually chewed the kelp forest right out and we're left with what looks like effectively bare rock. And this is very extensive in northeastern New Zealand in, in shallow reef areas. This has nothing like the biodiversity of the original kelp forest. What we see here effectively is an equivalent to paddocks full of sheep on land. The uh, kinna are equivalent to sheep and the uh, rocky bottom there without kelp is rather like a, a paddock full of grass and you wouldn't expect um, forest to grow in a paddock full of sheep. Much the same thing here, you don't expect the kelp forest to recover in an area like this that is grazed con constantly by large amounts of, of sea urchins. This is a drawing I did in 1983 of the underwater zonation pattern at the northeastern corner of Goat Island uh, down at the Marine Reserve near Lee. And this is typical of northeastern New Zealand. Up in the shallows there's what we call a shallow mixed weed zone, then there's this Kinnabaran zone, and then the typical kelp forest, and below that, below about 20 metres on that coast, there's not enough light for large seaweeds to grow and below that level they have this amazing sponge garden which is a fantastic place for divers to go and, and, and see. When I did this drawing in 1983, which was about uh, eight years after the Marine Reserve was created, we had no reason to believe that this Kinnabaran zone, widespread throughout northern New Zealand, was anything other than a natural part of the zonation. We now know that's an artefact of fishing. 
That's because there's been too many snapper and crayfish, main predators of the kinna, taken out of the system over the last 60 years or so, and the kinna have multiplied and eaten out the kelp forest. If you protect an area from fishing, it doesn't take very long for the changes to become obvious. If we look at the Poor Knights Islands, which are uh, been a no-take, fully protected zone for 10 years when this photo was taken, lots of big snapper, plenty of them to see up and down the cliffs out there. So this is after about 10 years protection, a big change. If we look at the population structure of snapper and see how they're different in different places, this shows the abundance of snapper up this way and the ages across here, which effectively equates to size. This curve here is what the Ministry of Fisheries have come up with for the shape of the population before any fishing took place. And you can see uh, at that time there were quite a lot of 20 year old fish, 30 year old fish. They will grow to 60 years given a chance. This curve here is what it's like in the fished area of northeastern New Zealand. And you can see most of the snapper disappear once they reach a legal takeable size, which is equivalent to about six or seven years. And at that point, there's very, very few big ones. Obviously, there's some still out there. Uh, people manage to catch big snapper from time to time, but it's nothing like the original population. If we look at Goat Island Marine Reserve, which has been in existence since 1975, uh, so it's you know, 35 years old. This is the shape of the curve. And there's a lot more decent size or decent age snapper compared with the wild stocks, but still nothing like you would get in the original stocks before any fishing took place. Same sort of thing happens with crayfish. If you protect an area from fishing, obviously the crayfish have a chance to grow old and big and it works really well for, for crayfish. 